Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast. Uh, we are coming at you on January 22nd, 2021, second day of the Biden administration. Second or third? I can't remember. But, uh, well, anyway. The third, the third, third day. Well, okay, third day. The second, the second full day. Second full day. It's so much fun, I'm losing track. <laughs> 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 Before we jump into any of that fun, uh, let me introduce you to uh, our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And up in our right-hand corner, in a cockpit, no less, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett. And he is a pilot in the state of California. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I will be your host today. Uh, so let's jump into some of the news. It's funny, you know, the, the news just doesn't stop rolling. We thought things were going to slow down a little bit, and we could dive into more interviews and sort of just discuss libertarian topics. But the crazy news that just assaults our liberty just keeps happening day after day after day and so the latest of which is it comes from aoc so sort of uh, one of the usual suspects in assaulting liberty <laughs> and, uh she has recently said in an interview uh that she wants to rein in the media so she wants to to be able to control misinformation so, you know, kind of like when, you know, uh, Biden said that uh, uh, Joe Blake, uh, you know, was uh, innocent and didn't have a knife. And <laughs> it turned out he did <laughs> because Joe Blake admitted it. Uh, but anyway, so that's uh, uh, aside from the point. But, you know, we've seen a ton of misinformation and I'm sure the left can point to some on the right. I know oh, we've certainly seen a lot that's coming from the left, you know, CNN journalists telling us it's a mostful, mostly peaceful protest, mostly peaceful while a protest. riot with fires and people being brutalized are happening right in the, behind the camera. And it's yes. a mostly peaceful protest. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, she wants to have a government entity come in there to essentially control the, the media. And uh, she's talking about having a, uh, uh, truth and reconciliation committee, uh, committees to deal with this. So uh, what do you guys think of her ideas for the Ministry of Truth? Has she been reading uh, 1984 as a playbook? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Oh, my God. <laughs> we will find you and we will send you to the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, she, she just, uh, you know, for a little little girl, and, you know, she's kind of cute. You know? She is. She, she is. is. Yeah. Yeah, she sure can't come up with some tyrannical ideas. Uh, <laughs> I know. What, what can I say, uh, Leon? What do you think? I mean, is this is this person uh, evil well, or just uh, is she pandering to the to, the the I don't know who she's pandering to. I guess there's plenty of people like that out there. I don't know. Well, I think I think liberalism is is a sickness, and I think o, um, OAC AOC or whatever the hell her name is. She is infected with something worse than COVID. Seriously, it's, it's really affecting her brain. Well, since the very beginning, it's been affecting her brain. This woman cannot come up with a good idea. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, she could never come up with a good idea. Imagine this. The government, which we know could never get anything right, is now going to determine truth. Imagine that. Yeah. This government, which I've lied to us so many times, okay? <laughs> These are the people that are going to tell us what, what is true and what is false. You couldn't yeah. imagine that. Imagine Dr. Fauci, who was working for the government, or well, still is working for the government, <laughs> who lied to us three or four times. And admitted he lied to us. And admitted he lied to us. <laughs> hey, oh, wait. You know, you're right. I think, um, I think the first person she ought to arrest is Dr. Fauci. There you go. There you go. Number two is James Clapper that not only lied to the American public, but it lied to Congress, right? In Under, their oath. Under oath. Under oath. And yes. then he admitted it. So yes. there's that's two uh, nice juicy apples, low hanging fruit yeah. for good old AOC <laughs> to um, put to the cola. Yeah. Well, well, it's funny. Not only does she not want, uh, she's not talking about Clapper, she's talking about arresting the guy who reported on Clapper. 
Yes, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Snowden, you know, right? I mean, oh, you know, yeah. it's uh, you know, sad that he wasn't given a pardon in these final days, but you know, that's a whole nother bucket of worms to get into. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna get know. into that bucket of worms so that I can vent for a while. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, maybe we should because there are some things here that is related to all of this, you know. There there are some really scary things that are being put out there, you know. Honestly, that makes you makes you wonder, you know. I looked recently. Um, Katie Katie Corrick, who used to be on one of the morning shows. I mean, she was she was very popular. I don't know why she's an empty head, just like AOC, talking about deprogramming conservatives. Okay, that's what they're talking about deprogramming conservatives. What next? Mm -hmm. We walk down the street and they're gonna arrest us? Ah, they're gonna put us in a concentration camp somewhere? Yeah, camps don't appear to be that far off. I Project Veritas just had a sting where they got uh, a, a lawyer of all people for PBS Public Broadcasting uh, going on about how he thought that there should be uh, a, a camps to take away kids from conservatives who needed yes. to be deprogrammed. Yes. So you know, uh, this and that's 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 just one person. I mean, there's been a lot of other of these uh, lefty media sources recently. I saw the the woman from the 1619 Project, of all things, on an, in, I think it was MSNBC show, and they were going on about how, you know, they need these reprogramming camps, you know, to to, to make sure that they, uh, you know, get the right ideas in people's heads, you know, like the like the the fictional 1619 Project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, you mean the, the, the public schools are not the, the camps that to take everybody to to reprogram them? I I thought yeah. that was already a done deal. <laughs> done deal. Yeah. But Tim, Tim, you wanted to vent, so why don't you vent? Go ahead, please. <laughs> well, Did you want to vent about I, something? I, I, I think uh, Jay, Jason has a um, a plan for the uh, pardons. Do you not, Jason? And we'll yeah, see. Yeah. If we can, uh, we're doing pretty good on timing, so I think we'll probably make it to those. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, but but you know, but 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 seriously though, some of this stuff is a real attack upon our liberties. You know. It's a real attack upon our freedoms. Now, free speech is under attack all over, are totally under attack. And here are government officials. This is a member of Congress. I mean, we don't like her. We don't agree with her. That's fine. But she's a member of Congress. And she's talking about the government is going to turn what is true and what is false. This is, Im this is amazing to me. And what happens when a conservative government do come to power and we decide we don't like what the Democrats are saying? What then? Well we we, we don't even have to say what if when Trump was in power and he was going on Fox News to talk to Hannity a bunch, they were the left was calling that state media. And yes, exactly. you know, they, they, they apparently they're not big on that idea unless they're the ones who are running the media. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. that's 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 typical of this kind of uh, bias that they, you know, and people on the right have certain biases, too. Uh, they don't. Um, but uh, yeah, OK, I mean, you know, it's just hi hypocritical on, no matter who it's coming from. And fortunately, though, the the viewers get to hear from three people that may be considered because we are libertarians, that that we enjoy uh, conservative uh, views. In other words, we're trying to conserve those uh the the bases uh of our uh, founding uh documents and our founding um fathers and uh the founding of this uh government that that we've established under a constitution so we're trying we're trying to maintain its levels of freedom you know <laughs> we're not doing a very good job but yes. hey uh at, at least you know at least we're not going to be um saying one thing out of one side and the other thing out of another side being hypocrites about it we still we still need to conserve life liberty and the pursuit of happiness we still yeah. need to conserve that definitely well that, don't worry in the, those uh, education camps they're going to tell us what happiness is so <laughs> <laughs> but we will all have the exact same thoughts on happiness so. yes of course yeah, we've, we've proven throughout history that humans always have the same thoughts about everything exactly we don't need a market to figure those things out from the bottom up you know no 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 hey, we'll see. AOC will figure it out for us. Definitely. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, get, getting on from that terrible nonsense, uh, you know, I just, uh, wow, you know, camps and uh, truth commission, 
you know, wow, being brought to us by the Democrats. There, there was some uh, other news, uh, I guess, coming out from the uh, end of the Trump administration, and that's his final day of pardons. And so mm. uh, he uh, recently went through about 100 pardons, I think, on his last day, roughly. I'm not uh, sure. Well, it's 140, 140 pardons and commutations. Total. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, I was uh, going through a few of them, and it, it, what was more impressing me was who was not on the list than who was on the list. But yeah. as far as who was on the list, though, you know, I, I you know, as I was just kind of perusing it, I saw a lot of people who were being either commuted or pardoned for financial crimes and, you know, maybe yeah, charges of carrying a gun, maybe when yeah. they're on parole or something like that. But, sure. you know, I, to me, I, I'm, it, it just begs the question, you know, if you're a libertarian, I think you don't want one person to be running around and arbitrarily deciding justice for, you know, different justice for different people. I mean, that's what you had essentially under a king. And here, I, I think some of, if, if I were to decide myself personally who I thought needed a pardon, it would probably have been somebody like uh, Eric Snowden or... Um, Oh, the, the, the WikiLeaks guy, Assange. Julian Assange. Uh, Julian Assange. And, uh, you know, um, you know I'm, I've heard a little bit about Ross Ulbrich. I don't know for sure on his case. But the point is there's some people who, that, you know, very big issues, very broad issues that have to do literally uh, huge implications on liberty. In the case of Assange and Snowden, they were reporting uh, against lies that the government was telling us. And, you know, so the idea that those guys aren't given a pardon, but, you know, people for run of the mill, uh, you know, financial crimes or other things are given a pardon. It, to me, this is what's the point? Why even have a pardon system if this is what we're going to be doing? But anyways, I, what do you guys have to think about that? Well, I mean, you, 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 make, you make a good point that but this um, the pardon, the, 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 the power of pardon by the president. It is absolute. It is in the constitution, but it really and truly, it does um, it does lead to really and truly unequal justice. You're you're absolutely right about that because, I mean, there are people in prison sitting in prison today uh, who have committed similar crimes and they are they are not being pardoned. But yet, people who for some reason has had got the attention of the president, they now are, are free of their charges. I mean, Lil Wayne, the rapper. He had a gun charge that was he was about to be sentenced. Now he got away. Um, Steve Bannon, who had some financial issues, there are tons of people in prison today um, who who um, who who are serving time. And Steve Bannon now is going to be free of his his, his charge. And Janine Perio, uh, her ex husband, he is now free of his his conv uh, conviction for financial crimes. But the point is, though, you're right. It does lead to un unequal justice. But I don't know. I mean, it is, in, it is in the Constitution. It is absolute. And Trump could pardon anybody for any reason, or any president for that matter, and presidents in the past have done so. But it's a valid point to say it leads to some sense of unequal justice, which I don't know how we get around that unless we take away the pardon power from the president. And that will require some sort of constitutional amendment. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, like, uh, for example, the, the 14th Amendment, um, the Equal Protection Clause under the law, so on. Uh, so I, I see where Leon's going there. Um, uh, you know, if it were a, if a pardon was done based on really looking at the, you know, is justice really being served here and, and not paying attention to did this person like me or support me or do things for me in the past, like, Apparently Trump did pardoned a bunch of his buddies and that kind of thing. Okay, it, you know if it wasn't about pardoning your buddy, but it was about really meeting out justice in an unjust uh, um, justice system, <laughs> unjust system. Um, the uh, it, it would be a different thing, and I, I don't think Leon would uh, he, he would then be saying, Okay, well, it wasn't equal justice for all, however, instead of locking the people that were pardoned back up, maybe they ought to unlock the people that were, um, you know, look at it the other way, you know, like, like Oh my gosh, they're not going to tax such, su such and such. Well, well, that's not fair, I'm being taxed. Well, no. 
no, don't think of it that way. Think about it. We all should not be taxed, you know, yeah. instead of, yeah. instead of <clears throat> we should all be in jail, <laughs> equally in jail <laughs> or equally poor or equally taxed. Well, how about, you know, maybe we ought to have some equal, uh, you know, justice here and, and let out the other people that are in there unjustly. And, um, you know, like Ross Ulbrich, oh my God, listen to a 45 minute podcast not long, it was a long time ago, with his mother um, on Tom Woods. You can watch, look up at, uh, the Tom Woods show and find that podcast and listen to it. Ross Ulbrich's mother. Okay, there you go. Somebody a little close to him. And then, sorry, just to uh, let people know, so Ross Ulbrich, uh, Silk, Silk Road, Road. Uh, big time. Uh, yeah, I think Silk. he started the Silk Road, which was a way that a lot of, uh, you know, right. illegal items like you know drug war yeah. stuff and all that so, kind of stuff so a lot of illegal exchanges were were accomplished so um and of course ever since they got rid of silk road of course no one does drugs anymore because they can't get them, <laughs> right we all know that okay silk road, yeah we're, we're this silk close road, to winning the war on drugs <laughs> exactly. silk road brought buyer and seller together uh, yeah. in a digital environment okay <laughs> just like uh, th this th i don't know if you know this but the um uh the the ah, what's it called um where you you buy and sell things locally um you know you you put an ad in craigslist craigslist, craigslist. Yeah. craigslist. Yeah. 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 well here in california craigslist decided because you know we all know the government is so pure as the wind driven snow that they, <laughs> that they would um make it illegal for uh anything related to sex so it didn't matter if it was um you know you, you and your your wife wants to have a threesome with another guy or another gal you can't put an ad in there about a threesome right so because it's about sex right if you're a massage therapist you can't put an ad that you know hey i give a really nice happy ending no 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 because it's about sex now so what what happened okay people stopped having sex illegal sex they stopped having three sons right away we know that's what happened no what happened was well no we, we all have a fauci guidebook that tells us exactly <laughs> what the right position exactly. and the proper way to wear a mask during intercourse exactly. <laughs> no, so, so what happened was uh Basically, people in the sex industry, and it's, it's going to, I'm sorry, it's the oldest uh, um, profession. Uh, yes. th these people had developed a way of getting buyer and seller together without the middleman, who was the pimp, okay? Yes. And it was safer, better for everybody involved. The, the sex workers actually could make a buck and not be exploited. Now thanks to the government that all goes back to the old days before um, smartphones and uh, these kind of apps that you could run around with and oh I'm gonna meet, meet up with juicy Lucy today and you know a way of, of meeting Lucy right and so um, could you forward me that one too <laughs> yeah. oh, Jeez. But, but now, no no it's too late it's too late because oh, no juicy, has, juicy Lucy's uh, already taken huh no no well, maybe you know, you'd up. have to ask. No, but, but now you guys have to go through Lucy's pimp to get a, a shot at Lucy, okay? Because, because they got rid of Craigslist, and and that and that was from the the state of California did this ridiculous yeah. thing. Okay, so um, so likewise with Silk Road, I'm trying to do an end around here. You know, instead of of buyer and seller getting together, uh. To, you know, now you got to go through the middleman. So now you got to go to the to the dealer. So now you know you got to run around, drive around your car, waste a bunch of gas. You got to find the the guy that's got the dope and and buy the dope that way. You know, and so so people have said, well, Ross Ulrich is so evil because he brought people together. No more than Craigslist did, and no more yeah. than Craigslist does in states other than California. And uh, and many other ways. It's, it's like they have just, you know, it's like, I'm sorry to break it to you folks, but drugs are going to happen. OK, there's a certain yeah. percentage of people and it's about five percent of the population that want to do hard drugs. OK, they're going to keep doing them. And unless you have a way for them to get off drugs, like maybe, 
you know, a, a real, um, you know, put some effort instead of locking them up to, to um, actually um, uh, getting them with a, an, a, a doctor and getting them on a program if they want it, you know, is, but other than that, you're done. I'm sorry, you people that want to stop people from taking drugs. It ain't going to happen. Okay. Grow up. It's not going to happen. So, and, Tim, and what so, you're saying about Silk Road and and uh, uh, Craigslist is that they their efficiency really is a climate friendly way of engaging yeah. in these activities. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It's climate friendly, which you know that ought to appeal to the at least, at least the dumb Democrats out there I and mean, threw them right off the bat. <laughs> Well, I'm yeah. just thinking all that driving around you talked about looking right. for your next fix, you know, you, hey, exactly. you go straight there. You don't need to waste gas, you know, and, you get, <laughs> and you get it in the mail. Not only that. And OK, they're making it they're making it so difficult to find Juicy Lucy. That's the problem. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Where in the world is Juicy Lucy? Juicy Lucy. <laughs> I know, I know. It used to be you could find her, but not anymore. You got to go through the pimp. I mean, it's a done deal. I don't know what to say. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. So, so maybe it's a little more difficult. But I'm telling you what: um, when people are motivated, they will find a way. And it's it's just it's just going to keep happening. It's, it's so sad. <laughs> You know, all these these terrible sin crimes like, you know, prostitution and drugs and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It's, you know, <clears throat> just going to happen. And it doesn't matter if there's a Silk Road or a Craigslist or whatever. Okay? Whatever. So get over sure. that part. Now you have to go back to why is a Ross Ulbricht that all he did was create this system. He didn't know what people were going to do with it. Well, maybe he did. Well, even if he did, I mean, all he did was create a method. And that's it. He wasn't the one taking the drugs. He wasn't the one selling the drugs. That's all. So it's like, okay, I've got a newspaper and I'm going to put an ad in the newspaper. I'm going to use some code words and people are going to know that I sell marijuana, let's say. Okay. Mm -hmm. So does that mean the newspaper is complicit in the sale of an illegal substance? No, of course not. Unless you're an idiot. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> You know, so so there, there you go. I mean, it, it, well, so, it, it, it's almost like the argument against social media is what you're talking about. And the recently yeah. trying to ban parlor, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. because they, are, are they responsible for any message that's carried on their venue? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the whole thing, you know, the whole thing with that uh, seg what are that law 230 law or whatever it is. Protects yeah. Section 230. Yes. Section 230. Yes. Yeah. Section 230. Yeah. yeah which should exist. I mean, it's yeah. there for a reason. And it's a good reason. Now. Getting to Snowden now, and it's 22 minutes, but Snowden and Leon hasn't talked for, for 10 of those 22. Um, <laughs> so getting back to Snowden now, here's, here's a guy that called out illegal activity by the government. And we found out about it through him. He he did not, oh, every, oh my God, all the people, all those spies that he, he no, he didn't talk about spies out there in, you know, uh, Afghanistan that, that, oh my God, now the Taliban's going to find them and kill them. Baloney. <laughs> None of that happened. It's just, uh, just smoke and mirrors, just a bunch of crap. And, uh, what he did was he, he, um, called out the government on an illegal thing. He, he conversed with four people and went ahead of him that did it. The, the, the went through the, the proper channels and they all got blasted for it. Now, every one of them told him, Snowden, don't do it that way. You're going to have to do something different, okay, because this is a dead-end street. And they all got their careers screwed up anyway for trying to go through proper channels. So don't give me that proper channel crap, okay? Snowden is a great American hero who stood by the Constitution, and to, to punish this guy is just the epitome of 1984, Go ahead, Leon. Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, we know we are not led us for sure, but let me just say one last thing about the pardon issue is that even though you're right, Jason, about it does lead to unequal justice, unequal justice, I should say, there are compelling cases that come out of pardons. I think the most compelling of in this in this whole wrong, the whole thing about what Trump did was was um General Flynn, who should not have been charged and should not have been set, well, he was never sentenced, but he was charged and convicted. But Trump did pardon him, and I think that was one of the compelling cases that should have happened. But um, you are right. I still I still take your point about the unequal justice. 
Anyway, I see it's not going to let us well, we'll have to uh, you will have to uh, grind that one down another day because we are near the end of our show and it is time for our knucklehead noise patrol. And so there. today in our knucklehead noise patrol, we we are uh, usually what we're trying to do here is uh, uh, go over something silly that some politician said. And we've got one of the silliest guys around. But what's crazy is he actually said something sane for once. So I figured we should, we should say something about that. We should give him a highlight, give him a high five for that. Uh, so Cuomo apparently sees the light on lockdown. So <clears throat> recently in his state of the state, and he, he also mentioned this in Twitter, he said, we simply cannot stay closed until the vaccine hits critical mass. The cost is too high. We will have nothing left to open we must reopen the economy. We must do it smartly and safely. And oh my God, if he could have only come around, say, eight months ago. <laughs> really? Really? Well, when we my, had the evidence, we had yeah, the evidence about yeah. lockdowns being ineffective. Yeah, that, about eight months ago. That would have been nice. Yeah. I mean, since since one of our early shows, we spoke about this designation of essential and non-essential. We said that on this show. I think it was in March or something like that. I don't remember when it was. We spoke about this and look at it now. Yeah. Almost eight, nine months later, now we have the government officials coming around and saying, oops, you know, this might be a problem. <laughs> now that the revenues are not coming in, now they see the light. Now they find Jesus. They have the come to Jesus moment. But what have they, what have all of this cost in yeah. lives and livelihoods? Government. government to the rescue here to oh, save, no. us. <laughs> save us. Save us. Save us again. You know, it's a, it's a funny thing. All the lives and livelihoods that have been destroyed, you know, not one government official was fired. Nobody was laid off. All the government bureaucrats still working. Uh, not even the ones who admit they lied to us on camera. Exactly. Fauci. <laughs> yeah, Fauci, the essential liar. Yes. Yeah, the essential liar. That's right. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's yeah, it's it's sad. I mean, you know, I was I was apoplectic, I don't know, apoplectic uh, uh, at the beginning of this whole thing. I, I remember having a uh, a show on this uh, right around when they were talking about a two week, you know, uh, shutdown, yeah. and yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, what's that going to do to property rights and everything when everybody has to figure this out after two weeks? And oh my gosh, it's been nearly a year now. So, yeah. ah, well. Anyways, we are getting to the uh, close of our show, and uh, so, uh, you know, hopefully Cuomo doesn't figure out a way to shut us down, <laughs> but I think we're going to have to shut ourselves down because we're yeah, almost we're out of time. lock ourselves down right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah we, we weren't wearing masks, so they may try and get oh, rid yeah. of us. Yeah, they may, they may find that we, we are not wearing masks and we're not social distancing, you know, with some idiot is going to look on the screen and say, God. You're too close to Tim. Okay? <laughs> yeah, they should. They should just for uh, effect move our boxes farther apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but thank you for joining us, and we look forward uh, to you joining us for the next ones. Uh, you can catch us on Facebook at libertariancounterpoint.com, also at Knuckleheads of Liberty uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can also uh, catch us on uh, public access on in Sacramento on Mondays and. Uh, uh, at libertariancounterpoint.com as well. So thanks so much, and we'll see you at the next one.